Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing okay. In this episode we have the usual strimming and lawn mowing, not to mention rescuing some plants from the strimmer and the lawn mower, as well as some frogs. We're also going to be planting some wildflower seeds in this garden, and also staying nice and dry throughout the day. Well, good morning everyone. Welcome to another dreary, wet, dull day in England. So this morning, I'm on my way to a job to go and help out an old fella called Pete. Uh, I did meet him about six months ago. This is when I was working on a garden next door to his. He was having a few issues with his garden. He's um, 84, 85 years old. When I saw him in the uh, peak of summer, in full overalls, doing his own garden, I decided that I would go and help him. Some of the kit that I've got in my van, I could do that sort of garden in one, two hours. Probably would have taken him a little bit longer. I bumped into him the other day. Garden is ready for another clip again. It shouldn't be anything too extravagant, just a lot of strimming and mowing, some tidying up. He normally keeps the grass quite long. It is a bit of a nature garden. Last year I saw all sorts of things in it. Quite a few frogs, grasshoppers. Now you might be surprised, but I don't see that many grasshoppers anymore in this country, uh, especially not in some of the urban areas where I work. Well, this garden was absolutely full of them. Pete has actually maintained his garden up to yet all himself. He's very fit and he does manage most of it himself. He likes doing his hedges, he likes doing his lawn, he likes building things. Mainly a fantastic nature garden, which we are going to get to see today. With all the things I've seen this man do, whether it's been up ladders with chainsaws, cutting his hedges, cutting his lawns, looking after looking after his quite large garden. He managed to damage his back when he dropped his car keys. He bent down to pick them up and he's really hurt his back. So that's why I'm on my way to go and help him out again this morning. That and I get to work in that garden and I don't know what it is, but I just love it. It's it's just really wild and beautiful. Right, we're almost there. Hopefully Pete's gonna get the kettle on. He makes a cracking cuppa. So that's how I'm gonna start my day on my gardening day. I started my day like this. <laughs> woof woof. Daddy, you look different. So yeah, that's how I started my day. Right, let's go and see if Pete's got a coffee ready for me. First thing to do is get out the tools I will need for today. Fortunately, my van is very well organized. Hopefully, you can hear the sarcasm hidden deep in my voice. Okay, so as I said earlier, there's nothing really extravagant or complicated to do today. The first job is gonna be strimming down all the wet grass. It might even be getting wetter later on, who knows. After that, we're going to rake it up by hand just to give the lawnmower the best chance possible to pick up even more grass. It's then going to get a little mow just to lower the height of this lawn a little bit more. It probably won't be cut again for two, three months at least. So this is really hitting the reset button and this is going to give me a chance to actually get some wildflower seeds sown in places where they stand the highest likelihood of actually germinating. It's not going to be as simple as just sowing the wildflower seeds all over the grass because unfortunately grass is such a thuggy plant that not many other plants can compete with it so the grass will simply bully out the wildflowers so what I'm going to do is find some bare patches of earth or where the grass is already not doing that well and we're going to sow the wildflower seeds on top of that and keep our fingers crossed but while we're on the subject of wildflowers, if you have considered or want to grow them in your garden, just do a little bit of research first, because just be aware there is a little bit more management involved than what you might think. And generally speaking, wildflowers prefer a soil that's not very fertile. 
you may consider using spring bulbs instead they're extremely easy to grow and then combine that with spring plants like primrose who will survive quite happily in the lawn and we're going to see some of those later on also to put your mind at ease i am aware that there are nearly always frogs in this garden from past experience so i am taking it extra steady as i usually do and in 25 years i have never killed or injured a frog or a hedgehog or anything else apart from slugs i've probably killed quite a few of those but i would still prefer not to it's nothing worse than getting a mouthful of dice slug while you're strimming but unfortunately they love wet grass but right now it's on with the strimming and i'll speak more later on in the video see you soon You may have actually noticed that I do use cordless kit quite a lot. The one drawback is the batteries do run out as you would imagine. But the benefits far outweigh the negatives if you ask me. It just means swapping the batteries over every now and again and charging them up when you get home. 
but for me this is far better than the amount of noise that my other strimmer used to make and also the fact that I would be breathing in lovely petrol and oil fumes all day so for now this one will do for me This section here that I'm streaming down at the moment is where the what I like to call nature strip used to be. This is the area of long grass so this is just so you can see how it's going to look later on in the year. And just here is a primrose that I've just found hidden amongst the grass. I'm going to get this moved because this is the area where the grass will be longest. So I'm going to put this on the outside where the grass gets cut quite a bit and hopefully it'll survive just fine. And also I'm going to get this hole filled in just so I don't break my ankle later on. So here I've found the nice spot for this primrose to go, it just increases the likelihood that it's not going to get engulfed completely by grass and it also might seed and propagate itself and then we'll have even more. As I expected, I've just found a frog, spotted him hopping around. I'm going to pick him up and I'm going to take him onto the back garden, which is where there's a lovely big pond and a few other water features and plenty of undergrowth for him to hunt in. He's a really, really energetic little thing. So hopefully he's going to be really happy here. As you can see, he's very beautiful and I'm sure he's going to love his new home. Right on cue, it's just started to rain, the frog is going to love that and here is a sneak peek of the garden I'll be doing next week. But more on that one towards the end of the video so please stay tuned, this garden is really one of my favourite gardens I ever get chance to work in.
So here we have a nice big patch of dead nettles. Don't think they're actually related to nettles at all and they don't sting. Kind of breaks my heart a little bit to actually trim these down. Fortunately they are going to come back and as I said before at the beginning of the video the idea here is to hit the reset with the grass and also I need this area cleared a little bit to find those patches of earth where I can actually sow those wildflowers. So I just spotted another primrose growing in this grass, hopefully you'll be able to see what's happening with the grass around this plant, it is slowly engulfing it, so pretty much the same treatment as the other one, I'm going to get this dug up, move to the outer edge of the garden where it's going to be a little bit happier and the grass will be less of a problem. Hey, look. Rescue. <laughs> I'll try to put them around the outside so uh, they don't get strimmed or mowed. And they're ever so lovely, aren't they? Oh, I like them. Dainty little things. Just for itself, uh, Yeah, you get used to it. There's nothing like being cold, wet, and hungry. <laughs> Well, that was Pete who just nipped out to say hello. This is another frog that I've found. Pretty much the same treatment as the other one. His new home is going to be a gigantic swimming pool. It's now time to get this wet grass raked up before I get the mower out. And I've gone into hyperlapse mode because I would imagine watching wet grass being raked up is a bit like watching wet paint dry. So here you go. Now I don't know if any of you guys remember the Diet Coke advert with that man in it. Now I know the advert didn't have an English overweight middle aged soaking wet gardener in it. But personally I think I've got something. Please let me know in the comments if you think I could be the new face of Diet Soft Drink adverts. Then again maybe not.
Okay, so I'm starting to get really wet now, so I'm going to go and get these wildflower seeds planted. Uh, one of them's a King Charles Coronation Special. Uh, hopefully that'll be nice. So I'm going to get those planted in this container here, and a few round the borders where I've found ideal locations. The rain's going to water them in and make some of those seeds sink into the earth. Uh, and I'll keep my fingers crossed that many of them germinate. The weeds and uh, grass and clovers stuck in this pot are very, very stubborn. I'm really struggling to get them out. They're a bit wiry. I'm going to rip them out anyway. Apparently, in the centre of this black pot are some hostas. I did notice a few little buds just starting to appear. So, I'm thinking this is going to look really nice. Right, all those seeds are in now. I've just roughed up the soil to try and bury a few. I'll let the rain do the rest. Right, that's a wrap. It's time to get the van loaded up with all my kit. Say goodbye to Pete until next time. The before and after pictures are just coming up now and also the nature garden which I will be doing next week is also here. Thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it, please like and subscribe if you can, thank you very much, I'll see you in the next one.